Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of NFI Hammer. For those watching for the first time, I'm documenting my experience as a complete beginner. I had no idea about miniature painting or Warhammer 40k, and all the videos I saw online were from professionals that have been painting for decades, so I wanted to show that it's okay to get started, it doesn't have to be perfect, and it's fun to make mistakes along the way. Six weeks into the hobby, I recorded a video showing how much I'd spent and what equipment I'd bought. That video was very popular and I thought I'd do a follow-up now, five months later. If you enjoy the video, please leave a like or subscribe, it really helps me out a lot. My first two models were the Getting Started with Warhammer 40k. Uh, it's $28 and it comes with a magazine that explains Warhammer. It's definitely not the cheapest way to get models, but if you're not sure and you don't want to overly commit, it is definitely a good starting off point. The next models I painted were these five Necron Immortals. I got this from Hyperion issue 25 for just $20, which is an amazing saving on the 61 that you can buy them from Games Workshop. The next thing I painted was more Necron Warriors. There's 10 here. I got these for $30 off eBay, uh, which is pretty good value. They cost $77 on Games Workshop, uh, but you can also buy a two-part Imperium magazine issues 28 and 29 for $40. I also got another 10, which I haven't finished painting yet. It's in my shame pile. These 10 came from the Warhammer 40k Re Recruit Edition that comes with a lot of stuff. Uh, but the edition costs $51 in but $65 if you buy it from Games Workshop. Then with each of these 10 immortals you get three Canoptic Scarab Swarms. So I've got six here. Again, half painted, half unpainted. Uh, the price of these are kind of factored in with the Necron Warriors. Then this is one of my favourite models, which is a Necron Overlord. You can get this from Imperium Magazine number 8 for $20 or $31 from Games Workshop. I definitely love the amount of detail here and all the gemstones. It was a pleasure to work on and I think it has a really nice effect at the end. Next we have the Royal Warden that came with the Warhammer 40k Recruit Edition box. This one was definitely simpler than the Overlord. I wish I had uh, started with this one first, but it was still good to practice some of the more detailed work. Next we have a Cryptech Technomancer. This is $20 from issue 18 of the Imperium magazine or $59 from Games Workshop. This was a lot of fun to paint even though I made heaps of mistakes along the way, but I think it has a really dynamic look to it and I think it's definitely very unique in the way that it's positioned. Next we have a Canoptic Spider. This is $20 from issue 23 or $65 from Games Workshop. This was my first vehicle and my first flying unit, and I really enjoyed the experience. I loved having all the detail underneath the spider. It just makes it much more interesting and dynamic. Another flying unit, a Necron Tomb Blade, which I got from issue 36 for $20, but you can get a pack of three from Games Workshop for 86. This was another fun one. This was an interesting challenge because it's a Necron warrior but inside a vehicle and having to kind of paint them all when they were glued together was quite challenging but I was happy with how it turned out in the end. And the final models were free models. So these are models that you can get each month uh, by going to a Games Workshop store and just asking for it. So for February there was the Jade Cultist, March there was the World Eater Jackal, April was an Assault Intercessor, and May was an Arbitrator Adeptus Arbides. So this was really fun because each month you can try something different that you wouldn't normally try, and also experiment with different techniques. So this was the first time that I painted a face, that I painted skin tone, that I painted black, um, that I used blood splatter. So lots of different uh, techniques that I would not have ever experienced if I just continued painting only Necrons. The next thing I worked on was this Battlezone Manufactorium Subcloister and Storage Vein, 
So I was really excited to work on some terrain because I hadn't done any before and I had no idea how difficult it was going to be. The level of detail in this is insane and you can see I've actually only finished painting one third of this and I have to uh, get some time and try and finish it. However, I'm really excited to finish it and try out a game of 10th edition when the core rule set is released. So I'll be looking forward to getting some more terrain as well in the future. Next we have the assembly gear, which is pretty much unchanged from the six week check-in. So we've got the Citadel starter set clippers and the mold line scraper from the Warhammer paints and tool set. That was $77. Uh, the scraper is trash, just throw it in the bin. I've also went and bought a hobby knife set for $9.90 and the plastic glue I'm still on my first set, uh, which was $13. The biggest amount of change since the six week check-in is my amount of paints that I own. I've grown my collection now to 31 Citadel paints, shades and technical colors. 13 of those were from the paint and tool set starter set that I mentioned before and I bought a 10 pack as it comes with one free and then the rest of them were just ones that I picked up every time I went into the Warhammer store. I'd always leave uh, not empty handed. I've also got a flesh tone from Game Color and two Mr. Hobby paints. The metallic blue green is one of my favorites. All in all, this is where most of my money has gone in the last month. It's just building up my paint colour. I've also bought some extra paints that I haven't used yet because I'm thinking of starting a Tyranid army when the 10th edition comes out. Next we have my brushes and paint equipment. This is definitely an area that I think I need to invest more money in. Here you can see I've got a $6 packet of black paint brushes, a $6 packet of yellow paint brushes, the wooden ones were $3 from Kmart and the white ones were $20. I've also got a sponge and a straw that cost me nothing as well as a salt shaker that I use as a handle that also was nothing. The wet palette cost me $1 and the dry palette was a couple of dollars. I've also bought these pie weights on the left which I use as a paint agitator. I put one in each little paint jar and I just find that it helps mixes up the paint. That was nine dollars and then the spray cans were sixteen dollars each from Bunnings. And finally for terrain I've got two bags of grass at $9.89 each. This is 6mm static grass. I've also got PVA glue at $5.99. My very expensive dirt, which is desert sand and stone, that was $13.29 in that tin. And finally I've got these $10 alien tufts, which I'm looking for a good excuse to open and start using. Before I share the totals on how much I've spent in the last five months, I just wanted to say how kind and generous and welcoming the Warhammer and miniature painting community has been. Saving money and trying to get the models for as cheap as possible hasn't really been a big deal for me. It's more a side excitement when I can get a good deal on something and you can't really put a price on that. So going into the prices, how much I spent on the models for my 37 models that I have today is $167. That's a saving from the Games Workshop price of $181, so more than 50% off. So if you want to collect Necrons, it's definitely a cheaper faction to collect because there are so many deals with the Imperium magazine and the big box sets. Then for terrain, I've only got my first terrain. Um, but that cost $40 and that's a saving of $65. So this isn't including postage, so you know each of these try to bundle them together, but postage would probably be easily like $100. Then going into tools and paints, tools cost $22.90 and that's been pretty consistent since day one and the paints have cost $238.70 so definitely a surprise for me here on how much money that's cost and how many paints I've collected. 
And then brushes and other painting equipment has cost $88. Uh, most of that is the spray paint primer. Two of those are still usable, but the black one I think is finally run out. Finally, the basing costs of $49 and most of this I haven't even started to use so this will last me a very long time. So that comes to a grand total of $605. Interestingly it's almost a three-way split between models and terrain, paint and everything else. So that's sort of the ratio that I've uncovered. Is this common for other people? Did you notice a similar kind of spread between how much you spend on models and other tools when you started miniature painting. Let me know in the comments below and let me know if there's any other tips and tricks that you wanted to share with me or if you wanted to learn any more about any of the content covered in the video. Again if you like this video or you just want to help and support me, uh, any likes, comments and subscribing makes a really big difference. It really means the world to me when people show their support. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching and I will see you next time.